Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive. Oh my goodness. There's so many things to celebrate and be excited about. If you're feeling a little grumpy when I say that, I get it. The last thing you want to hear when, when you're feeling grumpy is how great everything is. <laughs> but you can have a shift of perspective in the next 25 minutes. I promise you it's possible. So listen up. There's an amazing guest coming your way. I'm really excited to interview her about her new book, Menu Pause. And also, uh, there's really good things to celebrate regarding the fact that uh, my TEDx talk just came out and it's viewable. It's on the TEDx website or YouTube TEDx. Um, it's called Emotional Eating. What if weight loss isn't about the food? So I I'm celebrating this. I'd love for you to celebrate with me by watching, uh, giving me a thumbs up, commenting on the talk if it resonates with you, and then definitely sharing it. I would love your support in sharing this talk so people can understand that they don't have to do one more crazy diet or impossible exercise program, that they can indeed lose weight from the inside out because my goodness, haven't we all beat our bodies up enough with that diet roller coaster ride. I know I have. So yeah, so I'm excited about that. And uh, that's my big announcement. Um, also, uh, we do a lot of supporting each other in the Secret Sauce group on Facebook. So jump over to the Secret Sauce to end emotional eating now. And also, if you haven't yet taken the quiz, if you're not sure if you're an emotional eater or a food addict, you can actually take a free quiz and find out where you are on the spectrum. It's actually a spectrum. I think we're all emotional eaters to some degree, but where you are on that spectrum really um, is determined by two things, the level of control you have and the level of consequences you're accruing on account of your habits around food. So find out what your personalized score is, where you are on the spectrum of emotional eating and food addiction, and then what to do from there. And it's a free quiz. It takes like two minutes. So you'll find that at healyourhunger.com. And my TEDx talk is actually on my website as well. Super excited to have you join me today. So I'm going to jump in. My guest is Dr. Anna Kabeca. She's a triple board certified a gynecologist, and she's been working uh, with women to improve their health and to uh, really have a have a happy and uh, joyful menopause. Yes, it's possible. She has come up with so many solutions, several books. Um, she's just a beautiful soul. She also has her own personal story um, of healing her hormone uh, problems and and supposed infertility, literally, um, she was uh, diagnosed as infertile and she uh, proved that to be wrong. So you're gonna hear about that here. She's an amazing woman and she has a new book coming out called Menu Pause. So you're gonna hear about it here and she's just a love, I just adore her. So let's tune in now. Thanks so much. Please share this show. Let people know that they don't have to diet anymore and they can tune into the Heal Your Hunger show instead. So thanks for being here with me. I'm excited about this episode. All right, Dr. Anna, so happy to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me, Tricia. It's great to see you again and to hang out together. Yeah, great to see you too. I adore you and all the, the really magical work you do with women and uh, women who struggle with hormone health and, and menopause. So, and I'm just, I'm on the cusp. I'm on the cusp. I just, you know, I'm still getting my period. I'm kind of late <laughs> for, for, I think, you know, in this, in the, um, what I read, but I'm happy about that. I also read that's a good thing. So it's um, a very good thing. It's a very yeah. good thing. Yeah. So, but this is such a hard time for people. And will you talk a little bit about how, like you've written several books and how you came to this, um, new, kind of aha and way that you want to serve women. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think one of the big things, like certainly like we say, menopause is a hard time period, perimenopause, postmenopause. I mean, I always say menopause is natural, but suffering is optional and having like known what made me, you know, experienced it, our, our, our mess becomes our message. And that's certainly true in, in my story and my journey of which I wish no doctor, the journey I've been on to learn what I know. <laughs> yeah. So for those who haven't heard our shows before together, um, will you just kind of backtrack and, and share a little bit about your personal journey? I think that'll be helpful. 
Yeah, yeah. So at age um, 39, I was diagnosed with early menopause. And here I am, a, you know, a top university trained OBGYN. I trained at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I'm diagnosed with early menopause infertility by one of our leading reproductive endocrinologists. I was told the only way I could have another baby would be egg donation. And for us, my family at that time of our life, that was devastation on devastation. And, um, and so that actually led me on a journey around the world looking for answers. And as a result of that journey, um, experienced, you know, I didn't discriminate on healing methods, whether mind, body, spirit, traditional, you know, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic, you know, uh, integrative, and some of the world's leading top sciences at some of our top medical universities and research centers. I mean, it was, it, I mean, I'd say in, in God's hands, how I met amazing, amazing people and healers. And as a result of this journey, um, my, you know, I, I reversed that early menopause and became pregnant, delivered a healthy baby girl at age 41. And so now I'm 55 with a soon to be 14 year old. Awesome. And your <laughs> girls are so beautiful, just They're like you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. great. Wow. And but so I'd then I struggled with, you know, I'd struggled all my life with obesity, with weight loss resistance. One time I was well over 240 pounds. I'll never forget. And this is where you and I, this is where I really fell in love for what you do and your work. Cause I remember uh, one, you know, time early in, in my marriage, maybe we'd only been married a few years. And my husband at the time, he says, you know, you go to sleep thinking about food and you wake up thinking about food. I'm like, <laughs> what else is there? Right. right. <laughs> exactly. But it was that constant cravings that I'm such a foodie. I'm such a gourmand. My parents were amazing cooks. My mom was a baker. We grew up with food as medicine. And so working through my own early menopause and then a second menopause of 48 that I also, you know, was like, you know, like 11 months, no period, some, you know, mood swings, hot, let me just name it, you know, turn that spiral around too. And it's just like the things we do, how we nourish our mind, our body, our soul just contributes to overall health and longevity. And it's beyond what we eat and having the freedom from hunger. I mean, I just can't say enough about your work. I mean, that's really, that's game changing. And that's where implementing what we eat for hormone balance because willpower is physiologic. And that's really where I wanna see women empowered because you know, I mean, there, there's so much there. I lost my mom to heart disease at an early age. I have diabetes on both sides of my family. I have all the genes for diabetes, heart disease, methylation issues. I mean, yeah, so I, yeah no, it's, I, it's awful. It, it it's just, awful. it takes and takes and takes from us. There's no question about it. And people rarely put, you know, fruit, food addiction on the death certificate. So yeah, it's a big problem. Um, talk to us about the way, you know, you've really learned um, and through your, through all your research to really serve women and that like what, you know, talk to us about Annika Becca, Dr. Anna and, and how you serve women and make their lives easier and healthier. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm considered the girlfriend doctor. I always say I help women before, during and after a menopause really thrive in their life. And I, I have four pillars. I talk about nourishing our body, shining from the inside out and the outside in, embracing because intimacy and connection is honestly why we're here, right? And yeah, and then awaken to awaken our mind, body, and spirit. And my platform, you know, I've reached millions of women around the world. I'm really grateful for that. I work entirely online now and uh, I do physician to physician consults, but I'm really out for, you know, in the social media and educating and speaking and writing. And so my first book, The Hormone Fix came from my journey. And I would say it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones, because even if your hormones and your own bioidenticals, I hope post-menopause, we've got that bioidentical, at least a topical good progesterone on board. You know, I'm really big on that. So, you know, whatever it is that those are dialed in, there's so much more. So it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. And that's where I introduced my keto green lifestyle with intermittent fasting and a keto green diet, cutting out sugar, breaking up with that toxic ex-boyfriend. And from there, the next journey was a 16 day keto green plan with 16 hours of intermittent fasting 
and a plant-based keto green plan because my plant-based eaters wanted uh, to, to really excel in this area too. So, and then from there, it's like, okay, well, we're doing everything right. And, you know, we, we get to that point where we had tremendous success, right? I mean, I've had clients that have lost 60, 70, 80, 100, over 100 pounds. They say, you know, we get to a plateau. And I know that for myself, a plateau or a bump up and like, wait, I'm not doing anything different. What's going on? And so menu pause came out of, out of that next step in our journey? Where can we take a pause, a quick little pause, a quick little break in a pattern to disrupt it and, um, and improve, you know, remove that block that's stopping us. And okay. you know, so the whole, whole reasons in this, in this um, method. Okay. Love it. Now for emotional eaters, that 16 hour window can be really tough because we have a little alarm that goes off in our bodies, a little thing that was there from childhood probably that says, oh my God, I'm starving. I have to eat. Is Can you modify that um, from your plan? Yeah, absolutely. And also with the, key, with the menu pause, it's really not as much about intermittent fasting. Definitely want to empower the body so you don't have cravings. You go to bed satisfied and you wake up and you're not hungry. And that like the trigger for me is a cup of black coffee. I mean, even if I have a cup of black coffee, that's going to make me hungry compared to the days I don't. And I know it spikes my blood sugar. So kind of triaging, helping people triage some of those craving kickstarts okay. so that we can um, have nice steady blood sugar. So there's definitely that. And in each of the plans, you know, we're pausing something different. So we can definitely mod modify and always say, you know, it, you know, you don't, you don't run a marathon the first day. So yeah, just start with, you know, start with one pause, start with, you know, uh, doing what you're comfortable with and let's go from there. So when you say pause, you're talking about like pausing caffeine or coffee. Is that, was that what, what your reference to the coffee? Oh, no, I was just about cravings first thing in the morning. <laughs> okay. So are you saying coffee gives people cravings? It can absolutely give people cravings. Okay. That's good information to yes. have. Okay. Especially with sensitive adrenals. If we're burnout, we have tender adrenals or adrenal hypofunction, then honestly, that is a, a coffee caffeine can work against us. And okay. I, I've seen it with spikes and like continuous glucose monitoring seeing spikes in blood sugar, drinking coffee versus not drinking coffee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important information for people to have. So the pause and menu pause, cause I haven't gotten my hands on the book. I'm so excited to get my copy. Um, talk to us about what, what the pauses are. Yeah. So, um, they, oh, it's they, gorgeous. Look at it. It is gorgeous. And this is like, <laughs> this is my third book with my editor. And so we've got all these great color Ooh. photos, full page color photos in it. It's like a coffee of, table book. Oh See, my God. Coffee. It's such a good gift book too. I mean, it really is. Cause there's amazing recipes, like when it, you know, like in modifying things. So it's even healthier and more hormone balancing for us. So, um, in menu pause, there are five, six day plans that each pause something different. So the first plan pauses inflammatory foods like nightshades, for instance. Got it. And certainly we pause gluten and dairy because like, I can't eat that. So I yeah. don't make recipes <laughs> with it. Right. You know, most of the time. And then the second plan, you know, um, is pausing all meats. It's a plant-based plan and it's okay. six days. And the third plan is pausing all vegetables. So it's a carnivore nose to tail plan Wow! because sometimes digestion can be really, you know, troublesome and inflammatory can't digest you can get bloating. And anyway, and so then the fourth plan is a cleanse. Okay. It's a keto green cleanse with, you know, bone broth, smoothies and teas. Okay. And liver detox, like with that shot of olive oil with lemon juice, just for yeah. six days, we can do it. Okay. And the fifth plan is a carb up plan because Trisha, as you know, sometimes we've restricted so much, like we don't get enough carbs. And sometimes we're in yeah. this lifestyle so long that we do need extra carbs. And that's so good for pancreatic function. That's so good for so many things for human growth hormone. I mean, so having that flexibility in our diet, just like we cross train our exercise regimen, 
there's some theory around cross training um, our diet too to support the strength and resiliency of our gut microbiome. And then it's happier and it's happier, we're happier. So there, there's different little pauses. And the reason I chose six days is because we know that, you know, the, I would say beauty from the inside out and healthy digestion for glowing complexion. And, and if we have healthy intestines, our skin is more radiant, glowing and smooth, right? Yes. And so every 72 hours, our gut mucosa regenerates. And so in this plan, it's two 72 hour cycles. So six days, kind of the, the shortest time when we're eating versus fasting to really see, you know, to see a shift, to see. An okay. And how often does somebody do a pause? Well, I think it's just really depends on what they're dealing with. Okay. I think it's going to really depend on what they're dealing with. And as we work through menu pause, because again, this is, I learned from my community. We'll see what happens. We're going to do live challenges together in my keto green community and kind of work through each plan as, as the, you know, after the book rolls out. And so, um, so it's going to be fun to see what, fun. what comes up. Yeah. In, in oh, more that's people. super cool. And you have so many women that you serve. So I think you'll gather a lot of <laughs> interesting stories from all of that. Yes. That's great. Um, and so do you have symptoms? Is there a chapter in there on symptoms? So people know kind of what there's, you know, they can identify the symptoms and then what plan maybe they need to be on. Yeah, absolutely. And so like one of the things like when think about a plant-based plan, why put that in there? There's many reasons, of course, you know, there's a good argument for that. And we know a very highly diverse plant-based diet improves the diversity of our gut microbiome, but often we don't get enough fiber, especially as women. And there are a lot of colonic issues and, and constipation is something that so many of my patients have dealt with and they just thought it was normal. So a plant-based plan can really help improve, improve the you know, mobility of the gut, relieve constipation. And I want people to get used to what that, that feels like. Yeah. So this is kind of a nice way. Is it something like people might try like the plant-based diet and be like, wow, I'm feeling so much better. Maybe this is how I should start eating. Maybe it's how you should start eating, but look, there are seasons for a reason. Okay. So say that we <laughs> should change things up on a regular okay. basis. I think what happens a lot, especially like, you know, in my keto green community, I've had amazing recipes and we'll give you a link to some bonus recipes that we can give oh, your great. audience to that of great. course has some some good, like very like less than five gram sugar, healthy dessert recipes too. Okay. I we love that those. I'm a, I'm a foodie and it won't trigger, it won't trigger our food addictions. So, but one of the things is that in working with menu pause is, is just trying the different ones, seeing how you feel and, and at different times and we get stuck in a rut. Like I always talk to people and I'm like, well, what do you eat for lunch? I'm like, if one more person says chicken <laughs> salad, I am just going to scream. I'm like, okay, well, you can't have it every day because you're having the same thing every day. You're actually create, potentially creating a food sensitivity. We have to change things up. And okay. so that's what I wanted to introduce too, with the different styles of eating and experience it in just a short blink, right? Just oh, I love pause. that. That sounds like it kind of spices things up in a way, so to speak. You know, it's like you get, you do, I know I get, I've gotten in ruts. There's no question. It's like, this is safe. I know how it is for my body. It's like easy to make, you know, I always have it around. So I'm just going to stick with it. But I like what you're saying is that, no, you need some diversity and you need to change things up now and then move the energy in your body, you know, uh, introduce new ingredients and nutrients. So, so you can just pick up this book and open to something, you know, based on how you're feeling or what's going on with you and try something different. That's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. And even if we did like one pause, I mean, I like to like, we're going to cycle through all the pauses, but even if you did like one pause, a six day pause once a month, okay. and, just, and especially if there's one that really resonates with you and again, figuring out, you know, just seeing, okay. Cause it will introduce positive, um, positive diversity in your, you know, certainly in your life and your diet. Awesome. I love it. Well, thanks so much, Anna, for coming on and talking about this amazing, your books are so beautiful. They're so mm -hmm. instructive, so healthy, you know, and, and I know they're going to help so many people with various 
issues that they're having. And, you know, especially with emotional eaters, we've done a lot of damage to our bodies and we need to heal. So on every level. So thanks so much for bringing your wisdom and for all your hard work. Cause I know writing a book is no easy (laughs) feat at all. uh, Not to mention all the recipes. So bless you and all you're doing. I just love you and your community. So thanks for coming on to talk about all this. And we'll put the gifts in the links in the show notes uh, for everybody to access as well. So let me give you um, my final question, okay, before we um, before we peace out. And that is this being the Heal Your Hunger show, what is your deepest hunger? Ooh, my deepest hunger. Trisha, it's a good question. Let me think of this a second. In the moment, you know, it changes, of course. You know, I just think it's like um, my deepest hunger, the first thing that comes up is for more. You know, I mean, it's just like, like four more, you know, like I love life. I love my family. I, I love my community. I love being involved. And that's what, you know, that's what it feels like to me. I so love I it. I just want to keep doing more of this. Yes. Joie de vivre. Joie Beautiful. De vivre. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Anna, for being here. And thanks for everybody for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.